it doesn't even come close to it's it's it shouldn't even be talked in the same sentence. You know, hurling is just it is it is it is the as was it Liam Griffin said the river dance of sport or whatever. Was it Liam Griffin? I think it was. I think that was Liam Griffin's title. But no, Hurlin Hurlin is Hurlin. Like you can't like no matter Galway or if you're in Calvin, you know, there's people in Calvin love Hurlin as much as they do in Kilkenny. And that's strange but true. But then people don't get enough support and that's and people yourself invite me onto these things and I'll always I'll always cry for Hurlin. Like I'll always cry if it's not there, but I I just love it. I love going out to watch on the tens. You know, I love seeing who's going to be the next Neil McManus coming through. The Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates, and any other information, head to citylink.ie. It's Galway versus Antrim that is the focus this week. Galway make the trip on Saturday to Corrigan Park. I'm delighted to be joined by Antrim Hurling great Sambo McNaughton. Sambo, firstly, just with the weekend gone by there, some weekend to Hurling, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, Saturday was uh, the day that tore the heart clean out of me down in Parnell Park, but I came home and I sat in the house on my own and I was able to watch the Clare Limerick game then. And I didn't know the score and I turned the radio off on the way up the road 15 minutes from the end because I didn't want to know the score. But I had it in my head that Limerick won, but then I was very surprised. That, but it was a great day for Hurling all together. Powerful for Cork and Limerick and that's why we fall in love with the game and out there. But again, supporting Anthem can test your patience and your love for the game at times, let me tell you. That was a long drive home. What, what have you meant of it all? Because uh, in the last few days, there's been a lot of commentary, a lot of people giving out about Cork and Limerick being on GA Go. The Taoiseach's came out and he's uh, gave out that this was on GA Go. What's your own view on GA Go at the minute? Well, my own view on it is very much like uh, I have to be realistic about it. Like, like, I might get a few of these facts wrong, but I think RT can only do 31 games. Yeah. That means that all the other games, if they weren't in GA Go, we don't see them anyway. So for the fact that like I pay three fifty for a coffee in the morning, most mornings, it's I think it works out one eighty a game or something in GA Go. I bought it; it's great value. Uh, but to make that product work so that you can watch the Amrams and these out there, there has to be a few big sacrifices in there to make it attractive for people to buy, to make it viable, and I can see it from a business point of view and a money round for the GA, which. I, I would very much back Charlotte from the way he's thinking. Like if 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 you're gonna have a GA go, which is a good product, my my argument with GA go is it is the infrastructure. Sometimes it buffs and sometimes it freezes bad internet, but that's that's above my pay grade and that there. But I think the GA go like I think it has to happen. I think the modern world we live in that we have to have like if if we want to see every game we want to see. And hurling people get very few games. So I want to see every hurling match, no matter if it's Carlo Kilkenny, Limerick Cork. You know, Limerick Cork obviously would have been one of the biggest games. As it turned out, we'd all want to watch it. But I think GA Go has to have some of them games in to make it attractive to buy. Like, then nobody's going to rush out except for the Anthem or the Carlos. If, if, if Carlo people want to watch Carlo or I'm a bit of a, we have to have, if it makes it viable, so that you throw a cork and number again here and there, well be it, that's, we'll put up with that as long as we can watch every game. And at 180 something a game, I don't think people can complain about the, the price of it. But as for the T-shirt, like I was interviewed somewhere and I said there, like, like I think three or four weeks ago, he said he'd more in common with Paris and Berlin. They had Belfast and Derry now all of a sudden. He's running around worried about the GA and out there. Like, there's an election coming. I will take that with a pinch of salt. Like, and I can understand people getting frustrated. Like, it is frustrated, but in the practical Kelly of the business world, it has to work and it has to pay for itself. 
And the only way to do that is put some attractive games on there. Like not too many people are going to buy it to watch Anthem and Carlo and that there. And let's be realistic about it. So some of the big guns have to be sacrificing that there. Now, what game? I don't know. I don't love what game that people will, will argue with that as long as it exists. What game should be there, what game shouldn't be there. But I think that they need to extend the season. We only be three, four weeks at least. I think they need to extend it so that they're not all cramped on top of each I think it was last uh, two weeks ago, there was about three or four games all on at two o'clock in the day, yeah. which that's madness. Like, I think they have to space them out. Like, and, and I think the players love the Saturday night game. I know I love the Saturday night game, you know, especially in the pub, like having a pint and sitting behind them. It's, you know, there's that's what life's about. Like, you know. Yeah, particularly when Gerlitz was talking there during the week and he referenced that there's a lot of counties that are getting their inter-county grounds done up and that there's going to be a lot of centre of excellence uh, put in that don't exist in some counties already. Like, if we don't have GA go and he's, he's referencing big money there, like, how is it going to be possible otherwise? Yeah, well, I don't think GA go create that much at the minute, but I can see it mm-hmm. in a realm in the future, but like for Antrim people to complain about paying money, like we're now looking to GA to help build the casement. So it'd be it would be very rich of us to start complaining about giving the GA a win a point for a watch a win earn matches. And and that's my own view. Like like me as an Antrim man, I want to see GA back casement and build casement and blah blah. So I'd, I would be hypocritical if I start complaining about them trying to raise money. And and they're doing it in a way like there is, like, the, the, even the, I know RT will have the provincial finals and that together and that there, but, you know, and some of them have been very damp squabs, to be honest, and that there. The, the Limerick game was far more, the Limerick court game, I think most GA people would have rather watch that and watch Dublin play life, you know, or in no, life put on a good show in the end, but, but it's it's a modern world we're living in, and we have to accept it. Like the fact that I'm on here at Zoom, you're sitting in Galway, I'm sitting in Cushendall. This is the world we're living in, and this is the world we're moving into. And um, and if we're going to have the best grounds and the best thing out there, and like, it's not that it's not that Charlotte and Wina boys are heading off on all these, you know, with the money they're making on it. Like it's not that sort of thing. Like like the money is going back into like I think. It's a 70 80 percent of what they raise goes back into the GA. Like, 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 how can we complain? I think you know, and I understand what Sean Cavanaugh was saying. That he was trying to say it was the 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 most wealthiest amateur organisation in the world. Well, there's very few amateur organisations in the world. Let's be honest. We're kind of unique in that sense. But I think the one area of game and out there, if the I would like to see the Tissue stop complaining about GA and go and sort out the internet around the country. <laughs> Just with that, it's a bit uh it's a bit disappointing though that we can't view Galway Antrim or Dublin Kilkenny coming up now this weekend. Yeah, again, from an Antrim point of view, like people can't get the game obviously not there. There'll be a way for them to get it, but like it's there's so many games in that there, but I I see it in the future. The likes of Anthem, every county will be having their own streaming system and that they're going out their own people. I, I see that a way forward in the future. You know, like like we're only we're only really planting the foundations of this, and then this will grow and it'll get better as things go on. Like it'll be like it'll be like the phone. Like whenever the phones come out to start, they're the size of a you know a Kitchen sink, and, you know, and out there, things will improve and we'll get better for the next generation out there. And it's trying to do the right thing and out there and try and get out again. But like, I see Armagh do have their own TV channels, isn't that right? Armagh, Tyrone do, yeah. A lot, a lot of clubs have their own streaming services, yeah. Like for the county championships, yeah. Well, then again, if this is going to be a thing in the fact, it's up to every county to get their own house in order, then and try and provide for their own supporters around the around the county. Like like I know there'll be a lot of cushioned all people will not be able to get to the Galway game and 
and out there, and they would like to see it in their own home or in the pub or whatever, like and out there. But that's just the way that, like, we'd be lucky to get three, four thousand, five thousand at that Galway game. It's in a Saturday afternoon, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like most people work now on Saturdays, and a lot of people are tired, and you know, and to give up a day's wages and take the family and out there, it's a, it's it's expensive too. Like you know, you know, if you if you're taking a half day or something, or and usually that's a day where the wife wants to go and do the big shop or something. You know, there's always these things can play, but nobody dies. That's my problem. Like there's more important things out there, and and I hear a lot of people talking about how to promote the game and if if GA Go was going to solve the problems of promoting the game of Ireland like the, there was problems before GA Go was ever heard of and that there and I can think of a lot better ways to promote the game than GA Go if the powers to be want to get into that that's a whole different podcast like because if Limerick and Cork were live on TV it wouldn't solve the problems in Ulster Ireland like just before we do get on to go, Andrew, you mentioned there that better ways to promote the game. Just in a nutshell, if you were to think of two or three ways to promote the game, like in the weaker counties in particular, what would they be for you? Well, the, every county, like if I take my own province in Ulster, and I've been around most of it coaching and present medals down through the years and I would know a lot of people throughout them counties. There's great hurling men all over. Like Liam Humphreys coming from Derry to Cushendall on Sunday morning sent me a text today with a do a thing with the kids and out there. Like this goes on all the time here. There's hurling men in every county, but them hurling men that I find that none of them have powers to make decisions that like years ago, we tried to get one night a week for us to hurl, that there'd be no football played at all. Just give us one night a week, and we couldn't get it. They're the sort of decisions that need men. Like your own county man there, Deming Coleman. Yeah. You know, like he was part of that too. And, you know, out of great respect for Deming and such a great coach he is, not there. Like people like him, talk to Martin Fogarty, who tried to do it up 10 times. We just can't get. We just can't because it's not an anti Gaelic football thing. I, I like a good Gaelic football match as any man on that there. But the problem is people that are passing the Gaelic football are making decisions about hurling. Um you wouldn't dare let me make decisions about Gaelic football, you know, over hurling. Like you're always gonna look after what you love most, and that's human nature. I don't I've no problem with Gaelic football on that there, but but the Ulster Council not that there and rightly so, they're a dominated football province for obvious reasons. Like, like Ulster Hurling is not setting the world to light in any stretch or imagination. But if we're ever going to get a chance to close the gap on that there, we need to make changes. But them changes have to be made. But I'd like to see, you're asking me what I'd like to see. Like, and, and I only go through life by example. Like Myself and... Uh, Woody were over a number of minor team. The last team, uh, the Joe Canning minor team, to beat us yeah. two. Seamus Hickley's Limerick minor team, beat us by a point. The reason we were so competitive in them two years was because we had a North Antrim chairman for the first time in the history of our, or in the history of our county. He happened to live four miles out the road from me. He was a friend of mine. So he allowed me to do what I wanted. I had 12 challenge matches in that minor team before we played a championship match. We played, Liam Sheedy was involved with the temporary minors then. We played them, we played Cork, we played Waterford, we played all the big teams till Kenny came up and played us again. We had, we, we had a minor team that were up to the pace of the game. Like, we don't need, we don't need Martin Fogarty to come up and teach us how to teach a kid to pick a ball or how to strike a ball in the run, or how to hook, or how to block. There's as good of coaches and also there's anywhere. Like they've, we've done coaching courses down south. The internet now gives you everything you want. The problem is, and I've and I've used this example many, many times, and I'd sound like a stoker, right? But my wife drives. She's a driving license, but she won't drive through Belfast. She won't drive through Dublin because of all the lanes and all the traffic and all that there. Like, Antler's playing hurling. It's like having the driving license, but it's playing at a pace 
of the Galways, of the Tipperaries and the Kilkenny's, is making that split decision in that mellow second to close somebody down to to know where you are, to keep us of your awareness around you. And you only get that through playing a game at a certain pace, time and time. You like we can teach a guy to pick a ball, strike a ball both sides on the run, not get caught, catch a ball, do all the basics. It's doing them basics at a certain pace. And how you do that, you expose your children to that level of hurling at as early as age as you can, where it's under 10s, under 12, under 14, under 16. And the only way to do that is to do it on a regular basis. Take the example, if you take the best 40, 12-year-olds in Anthem right now, and you give them, you guarantee them 12 competitive games a year against Cork, Tipperary, Kilkenny, all their development squads. By the time they get to 18, they've played they've played in the regions of 100 games at that level. So they're at that pace. There's nobody in Kilkenny at 18 years of age got an all-star or a household name or he knows all. He's a 17-year-old. He's going to school. He's doing his homework. The girlfriend just broke up on him. He thinks the world... Every problem that a 17-year-old has in Kilkenny, we have an them. There's no difference. The only difference is they're exposed to a higher level and a faster pace of hurling. So the only way to do that is to expose our kids to the same game for the same amount of time as the rest of Ireland. And I, I, I made a joke about it, but it's a serious point. Officer Council should buy a bus company and it should buy a stately home somewhere in Tipperary. Cut down the costs. And every every development squad in Derry is a spell. Antrim, Fermanagh, Tyrone. Like, Tyrone Miners beat awfully there. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Like, things like that need to happen. And that's... But there's one off the thing. They need to be happening on a regular basis. Like, if Antrim loses three or four Dunloy players this year, we fall to an arse because we don't have the conveyor belt. We don't have the like we like, if you know what I mean. Like, Belfast is untapped. There's a tradition. It's easy. It's hard to coach game where there's no tradition. If you get into the, the heartland of Tyrone football and trying to promote hurling, you, you're up against an obstacle. But Belfast has got hurling clubs. But they're like, one of the strongest clubs in Belfast hasn't had a minor team in 14 years. There's, there's things that got going on. Like it's, it's not rocket science and, and GA goals not going to solve us. Where yes. it's free to air. That, that's that, that's the, my argument about everybody giving off of remoting games. Why don't they give off of remoting games last year or two years ago when you know when we couldn't get one night to play Hurling and Ulster? Where was all the people giving off them? Do you know where where was all these great? Where was the Tisha? Did the Tisha come out and say, "Here, it's a disgrace that that also Hurling people can't get one night a week to play Hurling." Where was the Tisha them? Was it Bertie Ahern then or ever it was? You know. Like, where were they all them? That wouldn't get you votes, but do you know what I mean? So all these people giving off with these things, I take my pinch of salt. I have ideas how to promote hurling, and so does every man. Like no, no one, no one. What's the word I'm looking? No one blanket fits all. If you know what I mean. Like yeah. what what Derry needs, Antrim has, and what Antrim needs, there's no point doing it in Derry or Toronto or out there. We've all different things in that there, and we need to look at it and everybody. But there has to be a wall. We ha- somebody has to grab the game for this government and say, we are going to promote this. It's For the next 50 years, it's not good enough that Tipperary, Galway, Cork, Kilkenny are dominating everything, right? And Clare and that there. We have to get Dublin, Wexford, Antrim, Leeds, Carlo, where there's a tradition and it's easy to coach up to that level and the, and somebody has to be brave enough and do it and they're and you can't make you, you can't make an on and out break and win the eggs and it's not popular because if 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 you're wanting president of Ulster or you're wanting president of this or you've got power you probably come through a structure of football where hurling's not your place and like, like there's been one Antrim chairman in a hundred and fifty years one North Antrim chairman in 150 years. What does that say to you? Where's mm. the strongest point of, of Ulster Hurling, North Antrim? How come we've only produced one chairman in 150 years? 
Yeah. Now, they're the, they're the questions. We need, uh, sorry, I correct myself. There is a Northampton chairman this year and a very good one too, a Glenravel man, but he comes from a traditionally football club. <laughs> now, yeah. There's but you know nice. what I mean? I know it sounds like a broken record, but, but like, to me, the points that need to be made, like it's not, it's not GA yeah, but, alone, it's but, the issue, like. But I'm not reinventing the wheel here. Yeah. Martin yeah. Fogarty and people and Damien Coleman, way better educated, smarter men than I am, have said all this. I'm only hanging in there there because I'm on here and I've got a profile and that's why I do these things, to try and move like, so that's why I don't get worked up of a GA goal going to solve yeah. all the problems. Well, sure, Cork and Limerick and everything will be okay. Bullshit. We've seen Cork and Limerick before, and we've seen a lot of good games down through the year before. Um, next Monday, the problems are still the same. Just uh, just with this, Amber, obviously we're looking ahead to go in Antrim. Would you have would you have had many battles against Galway in your own playing days? Yeah, I started off. I made my debut against Eggy Clark. Yeah, you know, I was father Eggy Clark back then. I I would have hurled against the great Galway team of John Connolly and Joe and. Sean Silk and all that generation and McInerney and uh, I'm trying to think who else uh, Bernie Ford, Noel Lane, Noel Lane, yeah, what an operator Noel was, you know, all them guys. You know, I would have grew up uh, a, a lot younger than them guys who made yeah. debut and it was shitty in practice against us. Like we would won the All Ireland B back then. You know, I think I've got three or four All Ireland B medals. Anthem, you'd won, you'd play the home final, then you'd play London away, and then you're in the quarter final. And it was always Galway, and Galway would arrive with this star studded team, you know, that great Galway team that won the, the, that All Ireland in 80, 81. And 80, was it? When the yeah. Galway had John Connolly, you know, Joe Connolly, Michael Connolly, Brian McMahon, or Johnny no, what was it? McMahon, McMahon, middle of the fielder. Yeah. All them guys, I would have played against them, and then later on, the Joe Cooney era, you know, the Fennerty and Keady, and that era, I that was my when I was I'd be around the same age as them boys. Pete Fennerty tried to knock me in the next week one night. We we traveled down in the back of a Hayes van, you know, there's no wonders in it. It was a bakery van, Pappy's bakery, Gary Kane's family's own a bakery. So we he put a sofa in the back of the van. And you had to put your legs up against the far side of the van to stop you around corners sliding about. And we'd, we were in pit start from from Belfast to Brownstown in Westmeath, and Galway came to play as Westmeath. But the back of the van was all during the day, it was used for the bakery van, you know, for sodas delivering around yeah. the shop. So we're all we all got out and were covered in flour. Um, and of course. <laughs> A few of us would have smoked at the time, so the door opened and this whiff of smoke came out and these three guys got out all covered in flour. And the daylight, you couldn't see because you were pitch darkness all the way down. And then we got into change, got out and you were kind of in a, a zombie mode. Next thing, Pete Finnerty was injured for the game before and he was trying to get back. She usually met me once in a year, put me through the fence and I can still feel it to this day. Like No one yeah. in time when you're not ready for it and you're all loose. Pete Finnerty's trying to get his place back in the team and he comes and just empties you like, you know, and uh, Brenton Linsky then too, you know, a few run-ins with Brenton down through the years. What a great battler he was, you know, back in them days. But Cooney and Martin Naughton and Ender Ryan and people like that were smashing hurlers. Like Joe Cooney was probably one of my favourite hurlers, you know. You know, he was, he was throwing the ball about Keane Lynch before Keane Lynch was hard off like you know would Joe Cooney be up there one of the greatest hurlers you've ever seen yeah I would put Joe in that bracket if I was talking about hurlers of my generation Joe would definitely be up there like along with English and all these people you know and, you know all all them great hurlers the DJs this world and you know Eddie Brennan's and all them sort of people like Joe would definitely, well, Joe was a bit before Eddie really enough from that generation, but DJ had been around then too. And, you know, a lot of great Cork hurlers too, but everybody had great hurlers. You know, every team was great. You know, another favourite hurler was uh, Ken McGrath, you know, people like that, you know, we used to go to toe to toe with. It was, you come off a of field, you, you know, you felt you achieved something, like, you know. But we were struggling for 
we were striving for a bit of credibility back then. Same as Antrim team today. That's why I feel for them. Like I've where Antrim were on Saturday, I've been there. Like it's not that I'm giving off with them because I wore that t-shirt as well. Like like we used that Galway team used to beat us by thirty points. Like you know, and then we started slowly, surely believing them. And we played awfully, I think, in 86. And I think that was Pat Carl, the great Pat Carl's last game. And then 88 and things like that. Tipperary only beat us before points. That Tipperary team went on to beat us well in 89. And then, and then 91, Kilkenny only beat us by a point. was probably our, I feel, our best performance ever in Crow Park. Like the Kilkenny team. It was naive at game. Our goalkeeper popped the ball out straight to DJ and he dug it over the bar. And, you know, just that cuteness of not being, not experienced at that level. And 89, like, we, we got an all Ireland final in 89 and nobody in the county knew what an all Ireland was and the whole place went mad and we were being interviewed. We were, like, before they wouldn't give us a cup of tea, now they're giving us soups and, like, we thought we're, we could carry away with ourselves. Like, but looking back on it now, you cringe at some of the things that was happening. But we were naive and excited. And it was great to be part of it in one sense. But I would have loved, I would love just to get over the line in '91. I think would have been a different animal. You know. You were saying to me uh, before we started recording the podcast, just always kind of your second team, given obviously your cousin doll man, the way the same college. Yeah, well, I was actually we used my own club when when I was a child. Like, I would have played in black and amber, big amber. It was a horrible yeah. jersey, big black band across you. And then with a guy called Kieran Dempsey, and he wanted to change the colours and get us more professional because we were starting to come then. Um, he says that and uh, round us where we are all north, the Carry would play in limerick colours. Uh, Look, Gil would play in Cork colours. Ballycastle would have played in Kilkenny colours. Rosso would have played in Tipperary colours. So the only county that that wasn't represented in North Antrim really was off or Galway. So he wanted us to go over and white them. And then I started to fall Gal for that reason. I've always Galway's kin has been my second team because of the and white thing, and that's where it came from. And uh, and I've always a soft spot for Galway, but. They're nearly as frustrating to support as Anthem, to tell you the truth. <laughs> just yeah. just with that, who's the greatest goal hurler you've seen? Well, as I say, Joe Kenny would have to be in that conversation. John Connolly would always be in that conversation. Uh, Keely is a back click. I would never, Ollie Canning. But then you're talking Joe Canning, like Joe, like Joe special, like there's no getting away from it. Like, Joe on his day was like, like we would have no problem driving to Cork to watch Joe Canning against the Rock. Like we, car loads would have left North London here to go and watch Joe Canning. Joe Canning was, I'd have to say probably, well, in my generation, I'd probably have to go with because John Connolly and them were a bit ahead of me. I never seen them at their peak, like, but I seen Joe Cooney at his peak and I marked him at his peak. And I would say Joe Cooney of my generation, but now you would probably say Joe Canning was special. But Ollie, Ollie was like, no, Ollie doesn't win all that medal. Like, like what a player Ollie was. You know, Galway have produced some fine orders. Like, let's be honest, and I've named quite a few of them and I've left more out than I've said. But Galway are not short of good orders. Let's be honest. Galway's problems is not producing good orders. Galway have a deeper problem than that, whatever it is, but the problem is not producing good hurlers. They they can produce as many good hurlers as any other county in Ireland at that top level. Like. You obviously think there's a problem there when you mention that they're producing good hurlers, but you you mentioned the word problem there. What, what do you think the problem is? I don't know. I, I say I, I'm not qualified or know the in-depth of it, but I know if, if Anton won four all Ireland medal titles in a row, we'd be massively diff- disappointed if we only get two or three players out of them four teams. Am I right in saying that? Yeah. You know, like, there, there has to be, there's something going on there. Like, that that good minor team that I referred to there, uh, with us, the Joe Canning's minor team beating us with two points, I think it was, and Limerick beating us with a point. I think uh, 
me and Willie brought something like nine players out of that minor team that were established senior players all through. The Neil McManuses, Eddie McCluskey's, the Shorty, Shorty's, the, you know, all, all them guys can right through. Neil McCauley, all, they all had good county careers. We broke nine out of basically two years. My own son, Shane, you know, people like that, they, they all represented Antrim for years. Like, so, I don't know, like I don't know what goes on, but I know you've great coaches. I know you've great men. Like I know Damien Coleman personally, like and I would class him as one of the best coaches I ever seen, and a man that knows his hurling and knows his structures of Crow Park too, and obviously out there. Like if I was going searching for an under manager at the minute, he would be in my top three waste list, like as a coach, like so. I don't know what's going on with Galway. Like, they're smarter men than me trying to sort that out, I'm sure, and can't solve it. But Galway, like, I know if, if like, people are saying about Cork's success is coming from these under-21 teams. How many under-21s have Galway and that down through the years? Like, Galway, to me, are under achievers. Like, there's no question about it. Like, like at that top level, a, a bounce of the ball can change a game, change a season, as we've seen on Saturday night. Like, Declan Hanna stops Shane... Shane Kingston that run, caught the right. Pat Ryan's getting abuse two years in a row, can't come out a monster. Now it's all changed. But but Galway at times flattered to deceive their, their inconsistency is a big problem with me. Like yeah. as a as a as a hurling man, like Galway's one team you will always say, what Galway team's gonna turn up? You know, that's the one it's nearly a, a sentence before you mentioned Galway. What Galway team will turn up? And that's a problem. I don't I I wouldn't know how to say I'm not qualified enough to get there, but there's definitely there's definitely something there. There's something needs looked at, or maybe maybe it's looked at too much. Maybe you need to forget about it and just question they want to go back to basics and bring people in with desire that want to play for the county and forget about talent. You know, sometimes you pick the talent of players. I know my own club, like and my, my own team down here, like like you would go out to train there, and, and if, if if you were watching. If you were watching, you cushioned all over the past two, three years doing drills. Neil McManus wouldn't be in your top ten. He wouldn't be. He wouldn't be in your top ten athletic or skill wise and out there. But I know who's first. My team sheet. You know, mm. sometimes you need to. Sometimes I think we go too far forward. I think we need to maybe take a step back and go back to basics. See the guy. The, the I mentioned guys there like Cooney. Like, like, Cooney had a desire, Keady, Finnerty, them boys had a desire, a real wall to one. And, you know, like, Pete Finnerty was not the most, like, he was no Brian Whelan or he was no, do you know what I mean? But you didn't want to be standing beside him for 70 minutes and I'm going well, like, do you know what I mean? Like, like maybe, maybe, maybe we're looking too much into the, the stylish player, the athletic player. Maybe we need somebody with a bit of, I don't want to say it in a podcast, but you know what I mean? And, you want somebody that, that pulls on that jersey when he pulls it on, something flicks inside his head and it means more to him and most like, you know, and, it, and then it's he's... Just, yeah, it's just with right. that, Sambo, because we've had a lot of, there's been a lot of negativity around the county since the Wexford performance. We looked really flat. We looked like we didn't have energy and there has been this question, there's been a lot of younger players drafted into the Galway Senior Hurling squad, but they haven't really got a chance and the reason seems to be when you ask a lot of people why these players aren't playing, the reference point is maybe they're not physical enough. But is this something that for some players you just need to go away from them because like we've all seen these players in Galway, they, they have that talent, but they have the desire and the hunger to play as well. They have the desire. Yeah. Yeah, but well, you have to prove you have the desire. The only place to prove that's on a pitch like you know, everybody does the speech. Like everybody sits in the change room and bangs the hurling and does the speech. It's when you're two points down, that's when you that's when your desire that's when the desire comes out. Like like on my career I could have filled I could have filled Casement Park with guys if you're ten points up and put you twenty points up. But if you're two points down, they're nowhere to be seen. Like some of the best men I hurled were, like they weren't skillful. They wouldn't be classed as skillful hurlers, but you know, you know, you think that Dominic McKinley's this word and not there, people would have would threw a brick wall for you. Like the only place to find desire is when 
like what's what's the thing that like, like a game doesn't create desire a game a game that you're getting beat in that exposes desire you know you need to show that like, we're all brilliant whenever we're on 10 points up everybody's running to Nolan Park or to whenever we beat Wexford Dahl, everybody's back in the bandwagon and was back so we're all heading to Parnell Park how many is going to be there to watch them against Galway you know after another like, like, like that, that's when you need that's to me is the real player that's why people like Joe Cooney and the DJ Carries of my generation and Nicholas English were special when you're two points down they didn't hide they, they wanted the ball give me the ball I do something I need a goal we need a goal here like and to be fair to Shane Kingston, what was on his head that run? Did, did he know he needed, like, like, I'm only taking that from this weekend. Like, yeah. uh, the point was going to be no good. Yeah. He needed to do something special. Grab the ball, use your asset that you have. Like, you know, like maybe there's more steady players not there, but. Uh, uh, it's just the thing about it is, though, that we haven't really moved the team on, even from. 2017 when we won the all Ireland, there's been younger players in there around the panel, but yeah, but but you're going back. Uh, I go back farther, and I need to back to Charlotte now. And people, I hate the same problem. Like like all these people can't be wrong. Like you know, maybe maybe the players need to look in the mirror. of it. you know, I've always I always believed like like I had a lot of managers that. I loved a lot of managers I didn't get on with, but I never walked on the field for a manager in my life. I never played. See that there, kissing. I I walked because I loved the game of hurling. And I it was the only thing in my life as good at. I never walked on the field for a manager in my life. I walked on for my club and my family uh, and people I got there. And I think people grab these things as you play them for the manager. I don't know. I never played for a manager in my life. And I, I loved Jim Nelson. Like, I would have died for Jim Nelson, but he wasn't the reason I was there. If Jim Nelson left in the morning, I wasn't leaving nothing. I was going to stay playing hurling. You know, like, I think you've got to be honest. And sometimes if you have a problem, maybe it's just look in the mirror before you look out the window. Maybe the problem's in the mirror. You know, mm. and I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't even hesitate to be arrogant to tell Galway or anything about Galway. Like, there's better men in Galway than I ever was in that there. But, I just find them from uh, an outsider looking on it. And I know I've been in enough company, GA company down through the years, all through my life, with some of the, the real legends of the game are not there. And it's the one thing they'll say that, you know, what Galway team will turn up. And then every year they, you take the, the Joe Cannings this world. Like, like, like if Joe Canning was not, it'd still be hurting for start wise. We wouldn't let him require. I don't want to bed with Joe Kelly and make sure he didn't get hurt. You know, <laughs> you know, like, and like, we lose Neil McManus, he leaves a crate of a hole behind him. Like, we, we must have put 30 ball in around the forward line on Saturday. Never won one because Neil McManus wasn't there, basically. And he was our ball winner. He could, he could run the old dirty ball in the air. And, like, he wasn't going to take the. He wasn't going to be a slinky side player, and that day he threw somebody out of the road or lay it off or drive it the net. That's uh, maybe, maybe that's the sort of player Galway needs. You know, it's, uh, I I don't know. I don't know. I, I I don't know what's wrong with Galway, but I know, and I think every Galway friend I have would agree with me that they should be better than they are. My son-in-law's a Norm Moore man, and he's he runs right head butting the walls here someday. <laughs> Yeah. I can I can assure you he's not the only one, especially yeah. uh, this But he's year. a football man. He's <laughs> mainly a football man. So, so my daughter goes to college and goes back with a Galway footballer and brings him to the Glens of Antrim. Yeah, what did you think when he was a football man, though? Oh no, he's a good fella. He's an <laughs> absolute gem out there. But but his passion would be football for. He played for the club actually. At the our new chairman from won a couple of intermediate challenges. Very good footballer. Oh, good I've crab it on the field right enough, but that's not right, you know. But no, no. But he, he hurts a bit for our reserves here now and not there. But, but Galway hurting like the the like think of the hurries you have at the minute. Name a god. Yeah, Conor like, you know, Brian like, Cannon, Dahlberg. Yeah, like we, we could sit here and talk about the through the team, like 
like Twill is one of my favourite hurlers at the moment. Like I love watching him. Like, he's my sort of player. Like he he'll run dirty ball, hold the ball up, then do something spy. I I'm a real it's, fan. I'm like but but it's the ball to wheeling. It's terrible at stages. Yeah. I know he's still winning, but you can't be expecting him to win no. every every he, ball that goes in because the delivery no. hasn't been good enough. No. If he's the only one, then it's too easy nullified. I'm not there, but 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 you see the, the way when Limerick and their flow, the balls are given Galan and out there, you know, yeah. more often than not, it's a perfect ball. He's out in front, he makes a break, and you, you, you don't want to stand outside him in case he goes the other way. Like he's in pot, if you're in behind him, if you go behind him, go in front of him, like he, he would be a nightmare to mark. And then if he gets that space, he runs on, and, and, and the, the, the forwards at this level at the minute, their touch, their strike, and everything's so good now. It's, Nobody fumbles a ball hardly more often than not. Um, and if you give them a ball in their hand, it's nearly impossible now for a defender to get a, to get the block or the hook up because they're they're laying it off. And you don't want to open up, but but the modern game has really evolved and that there. And the ball they're giving forwards now, like in my day, I made a career out of catching the ball and diving in any yards down the field, and everybody patting in the back of the hero. Now you've done that, you be took off, you know. What are you expecting on Saturday here in Corrigan Park? Obviously, Antrim are coming into this on the back of a board performance and then go and eat a reaction after Wexford Park. They need to win their last two if they want to reach the Leinster final. What are you expecting on Saturday? I wish you hadn't asked me that question. I, I don't know. I don't know because I think, being realistic, the game that we need to focus on now is Carlo. If we're to stay up, if we're to stay up, we got to beat Carlo with Carlo at home. Uh, putting up a putting up a a moral victory against Galway means nothing. You know, it's so good. Like you would imagine, Galway Galway have to win this. Like, yeah. and Galway Galway are the hurlers to come and be done. I mean, let's be totally realistic about it and honest about it. Not there. And Galway have to be done. Like, they can't afford to slip up anymore. So I would imagine Galway's going to win, but imagine. If I was Darren Gleeson, I'd be of one eye on the Carlo game, to be honest. You know, I don't know how you how that pans out or not there. Like it was such a disappointment on Sunday for everybody. It was like it was like somebody let in the air of the balloon. It just you know, we went down after the positivity of the Wexford game. Like we had boys lying in the ground, we're blocking people, jumping up to block people. There was none of that fight on Saturday. And it just seemed to be uh, it just seemed to be, you know, f- here we go again. You know, that positivity, that your own county, you know, these young lads have now maybe, you know, they'll, they'll push on now. They've beat somebody in, in the lane McCarthy that's above them and that'll give them belief. And But it, it didn't put it out that way. And I found Sunday, or Saturday, sorry, I found Saturday one of the most disappointing days I've had one since I quit hurling. And I've had a lot of them as a player. I'm not saying I didn't. I've had a lot of them as a player, but as a spectator or as a manager, the guy I think I've managed that them twice. And it's up there with one of the worst days I've ever had. I'm like, that's probably that. Because I did genuinely believe that we were going to have a, a go at Dublin. The way we finished that game against Wexford, the crowd behind them, the momentum, I, mean, I just, it just was a real kick in the. You know, I think a lot of people were surprised when they went to look at the score because a lot of people were expecting a bit of an ambush considering yeah. as mentioned, positivity after Wexford. But, and the longer it went on, the worse it was getting. But the problem in the modern day with the ball and everything we have now, if you stand off people and you give people and let them run at you and Dublin were playing about the end, they can pick points off from 50, 60 yards, 70, 80 yards out. It's easy. 20 points, you know, like it's the scoring like is getting better. The ball goes farther. The boss is better. Like the equipment's better. People are practicing more. They're, they're more skillful now than ever they were. But you cannot allow people to stand back and admire people now. You will just get destroyed. Like you know, I hear uh, it was Jackie Taylor said there during the week. Now the defence is gone. Like, but the way the way like. Your corner forward has to defend now. He has to be nearly 
the corner forward nearly needs to defend at JJ's or anything. Like, because if you allow midfield or their half back line or midfield to one ball and come through, like, it's nearly impossible for a full back line with a space that they create in front now to defend that. Full backs are you know, you're the glams to slaughter. Like. Would you uh, would you expect Andrew to stick with the same starting 15 to play against Dublin, or do you think Leeson might bring a few changes or two for this again? I don't know. Darn, if he's got a doubt of an injury, he'll save him. I would imagine he'll save him for a Carlo game. He'll try and get everybody right. He'll try and get us... It's more important in, in my world. I'm not speaking for Andrew. I have nothing to do with much. I'm not speaking for Andrew. But... In my world, it'd be more important to get our best fifteen on the field for Carlo than it is against Galway, and that's and that's been honest with the thing. I don't know, like, like there's a couple of young fellas there that I coach as men, a young boy Sean McKay and young Thomas McLaughlin from our own club, but they're only kids really. Like they're only, you know, mm. like I wouldn't like to see Dahi Burt up against Thomas McLaughlin to be honest. Like he's he's only out of minor and he's a bit naive and Dahi Burt and full. Full flow going, having to win a game like it might be good for him, but I don't know. Like, there's a panel there, but we don't we don't have twenty five players. We have maybe eighteen players that can realistically contribute to this level and out there, and we need them all firing. Like, I don't know what's going to. To answer, you, I know it's a long one thing, and I don't want to say it because I haven't a clue what. They expect and suddenly like, like the, the fact that's in Corrigan. What makes go, but, what makes Corrigan so difficult? It's a tight pitch, the crowd, home belief. Uh, we've had a couple of good moral victories there, and we came close there. It's just a home thing. It's it's amazing how the mind works. I I like the Gantam go to Kilkenny and thirty two points or something. They go to Parnell twenty points. Like Wexford, like. Who who could predict us beating Wexford? Then Wexford won't beat Galway. Like that, uh, the, the bookies must be sitting in Tenerife now with another rubbing their hands. Like I don't know. I just can't predict it. But it's belief. It's 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 when you know that you can believe a team, and when a team like Wexford give us oxygen, like and we we sense just there might be a chance here, then we go for it. But if what People say, like, all my life I was told, you know, what are you going to do in the road for? You're going to go down and get stuffed again. That's a waste of time going to the county. Like, not everybody in Cushendall were happy with us going to the county. That's wasting their time. Like, there's people still, like, I would say there's as many, like, I know the car road of Cushendall left here. Cork fans went to see Cork and Limerick rather than their own county. You know, you know I don't get that. I, you know, uh, everybody's entitled to do what they want, but like my own county is my own county. Like, like I, 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 when I say Galway's my second county, that's something to talk about in the pub. But I support Antrim. Antrim's my county. Like, and and you want to see your own do well. Like even even football terms, like our football is getting our minors get hammered by thrown and our man on their twenty. You see that and you wonder what are, what are we doing or why are we not doing this stuff. Like, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I, it frustrates the backside clean out of me, to be honest, and not there because we seem to be doing a lot of good work with business forms and not there, but we're no farther forward than we were 20 years ago. No, no farther forward, not one bit. We're still, and if we get down to Joe McDonough, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised because the way it's always been, Leash comes, falls back, Westmead comes, falls back, and Ant- Ant- come. New manage comes in, everybody wants to hurl for him, everything's rosy, everybody, then he's there for a while and people get fed up and then it drops off again and we don't have a conveyor belt coming through. It's the same in Kerry, it's the same in Westmeath and we've, we've always been like that in my day and on the, on the somebody comes up and has a conveyor belt coming through so that whenever the likes of your top players retire or get injured, you've, you're replacing like with like. You know, and, and that's where Galway can afford to do that and the Clares and the Tipperaries and these world camp where the likes of Carlo and Antrim and that can't and that's um, we need to change that It definitely does feel like the weekend though that Galway need to issue a statement here up in Cardiff Yeah 
what's the statement of all the reaction? They come a bit on about 20 points. Adam Scheidt proves nothing. If, if Galway struggle against Adam, Galway Scheidt, you know, can't beat Adam. Galway's in a low-one situation here. That's the reality. Galway's, yeah. Galway's making no statement here in Saturday, the under no illusion. The hurling world will not look at that and say, oh, geez, we're worried. Galway's back to beat Adam with 20 points or 30. Nobody would give a shit. You know, that, that, you'll get no credibility for beating Adam, let's be honest. Galway, the only place Galway's going to get credibility when they want to last for a championship, then, we'll, then Galway deserve credit. Galway, Galway's a team that needs to win something. Galway's a team that they're, they're not going to get credibility if they don't want to last for a championship. Like, they're not there. Like, there are certain teams out there if they don't want an all Ireland, it's a failure. You know, and Adam's and not one of them. You know, Galway is. Like, if Galway don't win Leinster or Leinster this year, it's a failure. And that's and that's the bottom line. And that's there's no there's no grey area there, you know, and that's just a fact. You'd you'd have to agree with that, would you not? Yeah, no. Everyone we've had on the podcast all year, you're into year three under Henry Shefflin. If yeah. we don't win a Leinster title after coming so close, if we did reach another Leinster final against Kilkenny, came up short to be here. Third final in a row, three years in a row, losing to them. So, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, 100% but, agree with you there. And it's what yeah, everyone but, thinks of Galway. Yeah, but Galway have got, like, even a Shea there is a renowned yeah. coach. Like, yeah. like even a Shea knows what he's about. Henry Shevlin knows what he's about from a player. I know he managed a great club team, fair enough. Like, you know, and not there, but like, Henry's, Henry's a smart man. He's, he was a very intelligent player, a great. Of, no point Tom him as a player. He was an intelligent player. Henry carries himself well, and I and I've never had a conversation with Henry in my life. But I would know Henry never sent Galway team onto a field to do some of the things they're doing. You would no. know that. No, you would know that. So it's easy to um. Well, you you can change the manager. You can't change all the players. Like, but what what's another manager going to do that Henry and Eamon and Sheik can't do? Who's out there that can who's out there like like even a Shea is respected the country over Henry Shevlin will my grandchildren will respect Henry Shevlin like let's be honest like you know so what what is changing the management going to do that um, what are they doing that is wrong or what what's some other manager going to do that's, that's right like, you know it's like, back to the thing I think players Players need to look in the mirror. If Galway want the one Leinster, Galway's capable of one Leinster. But the only people that can decide that is the Galway players. Galway, like, nobody ever decides whether you're going to have a good career or not. You know, yeah. nobody, nobody, nobody decided where I was going to have a good career or not. I decided that myself, right or wrong or bad or good. Or, like, I say, like, it's, people get carried away. I think, I've always said it, Managers get too much praise and too much criticism. Somewhere in between, like you know, the good hurler will come through no matter what coach he has. He'll find a wall. He'll find a ball. The guy that wants to be a good hurler will become a good hurler. No matter if even the Shea's coaching or Damien Coleman or Samuel McNaughton, he will he will become a good hurler because he wants it. The guy that wants it will get it. If you want it bad enough, you'll get it. You know, but the problem is in a team environment, you need. 25 fellas now or 20 at least the one or two and then then you're sure, then it comes down to at that at that level of goal you're playing at a referee's decision to bounce the ball but at least put yourself in that position where it comes down to a referee's decision where you can go home and say here we'd have won that if the ref had to give us a penalty or or if, you know that sort of thing like at least being being a condition where that, that's where you're going to lose a game don't lose a game because you didn't turn up. Like that's more the sense stuff. What's what's the point in training six months, six nights a week if you don't turn up? Like, for fuck's sake, turn up. It's as simple as that. Turn up. Let's start with that. Let's say mm. let's go in. let's just turn up. Like nobody says you can't hurl. Like there, there's nobody running around Ireland in the hurling where say, go we don't have enough good hurlers. What about them good hurlers turning up? This Sunday, next Sunday, and the Sunday after that, and the Sunday after that, and see where that takes them. Just go out and do what you're good at. Nobody's asking you to, like, we're not asking a, a 
directly to do a heart transplant. We're asking hurlers to play hurling. Like, that's why you're there. You're a good hurler. Like, and Galway's good, full of good hurlers. You know? And if you have any ones you don't want, I'll take a wean up the road with me. <laughs> Just, just to just to finish on the game, would you expect Galway to react here? Maybe it follows a similar pattern like it did in the league. Yeah, like it, it's hard if you're not on a hundred percent at the minute. It can go away from you quite at that level, as we as I've said already. If like if Kenny weren't on a hundred percent, maybe went away from him, man sent off. Everything goes away from you. Like Limerick, like Limerick against Clare, like. Limerick, I, I feel Limerick have come back to the pack a bit. I don't think the pack's caught up with Limerick. I think Limerick are starting to come back slightly to the pack. Now, what I say, Limerick's not going to want to know. I say, but they've come back a bit. But and there's no team out there really that had a hundred percent record going through. Like Clare are going to kick themselves. Like Clare, you would probably at this moment in time see Limerick, Clare, Kilkenny, or. Limerick, Kilkenny, Clare, whatever, they'd be the, most people's top three at the moment. If if Kilkenny get their best 15 in the field. But there's a dark horse out there. It could be Galway or it could be Cork. You know, Cork get a run going. If, if Cork can turn up the next day against Tip and do that, but you never know. Like Cork could, Cork's another one of them teams is people say, what Cork team's going to turn up? Like would you would you die with shot of tip beat Cork this week? No. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, you know, like that's the way the hurling's going, but I would just I would want to see Galway just for Henry's sake, because and not there, just turn up. Like it's not wrong. Like you can give all the psychology you want and pay him a fortune out there, but when all the boats set over, just fucking turn up and play hurling. If you're yeah. gonna get beat. If you're gonna get beat, go down fighting. You know, go down with you know there's too much side shows, I think, at times and too much emphasis put on like I was watching the Ulster final at the end of it in the speech. Like, how many is in a football background team? You know, Brent Devenny must have been on for half an hour thanking everybody in Donegal as part of that team. Like like sometimes, you know. Get guys fit, get their touch straight, get them desire, and get them a wall to one, and just see where this goes. Like, and like sometimes you know, one step forward and two back. Some like there is a there is a place for this. Of course, there's a place for everything now. Like, I, I'm not a dinosaur, no, but but there has to be a place for desire. They like got old fashioned word that wall to one. Like, give me a guy. Like, I'm a great believer. Like, desire one more games and tactics ever did. Yeah. Just uh, just looking at the table here, Leinster at the minute. Remarkable to think Dublin are actually top of the table, five points, and yeah. a win a win against Kilkenny or Go in their final two games will see them in a Leinster final. Kilkenny second four points, Wexford third on three points, and Go at bottom at the minute on three points. Who are the three teams, and who who are then the two teams you see reaching the Leinster final this year? Well, I would predict Galway's going to beat Antrim. So that's Galway yeah. on the many points then. Galway would be up to five then. Yeah, and Galway's last game is against... Dublin in Pierce Stadium. Dublin. And I would predict Dublin will be there. And Galway's going to get to a Leinster final. And the, the game that I think everything hangs on, and my, my Wexford against Kilkenny and yeah. the past couple of years... But Dublin is now good. I'm on like Dublin's a good team. Dublin, Dublin are the best fifteen in the field. Young Burke and Danny Suffolk and these boys running around now. They're good. They're they're going to take some beating. You know, don't write off Dublin here. I would say Galway's in the final. Then it's a toss up between Kilkenny and Dublin. But they're the three teams that's going to come out. I think. Do you see Wexford missing out? Yeah, I do. But. But I won't be surprised if they don't. And and Monster, I'm gonna. I, I said it two weeks ago. I've I've a, I've a gut feeling Cork being Cork. I'm gonna go with Limerick, Clare, and Cork. I think like 
Do you um, see Lynn McClare in the Munster final then, is it? Yeah. I think they're I think they're the two best teams in Munster and rightly so. And I think Clare have a serious outfit there. I think Clare's got a serious team there. Some of the best hurlers like what you, David Fisher, what do you call that guy? You know, what a player like. You know, he's some unit to love it. Like Clare have some lovely hurlers there. And that's why Tony Kelly in the field. If Tony gets back full fit then you know like I think Claire are serious contenders and I think if Cody and Mullins and that gets back Kilkenny are serious if I, I think Kilkenny's better this year than they were last year and I think Limerick's come back slightly now they could go back again they could take that on forward again but they're showing signs of not firing in all cylinders like them struggling and just switching off at times there's there's wee signs there that they've come back to the pack a bit. They're not as far ahead as they were last year, I feel. But I could be totally wrong. Like, and then of course you never know what Galway's going to do. <laughs> they could they could su- surprise us all. <laughs> Who's going to win the All Ireland for you, Sambo? Oh, I still would go with Limerick. I was still yeah. fancy Limerick to be honest. I think the the what three weeks off now, do they? Uh, two weeks. So they're out in a week against Watford. Yes. Yeah. Two weeks off and I think they'll go and if they get they get everybody back in the field again, like like at the end of the day, like it had to be a Royal the Rover stuff to beat them the other night. Yeah. And they weren't playing great. Like they weren't the Limerick of last year or the year before. And I think they'll they'll come back like hurlers like Kane Lynch and these people, they don't you know, like what's the old saying? Form is temporary classes permanent um, the team that I bet at the moment to I think it's a toss up between Kilkenny and Clare are the closest to Limerick and either one of them is quite capable of beating each other and getting a, a cut off Limerick but you don't know if Cork can produce what they've done the other night they're not going to be they're going to be in the mix Tip, I'm very disappointed with this year. Waterford, if I think Waterford have some class hurlers in that there, but I don't think of the tools or the enough in depth to challenge Limerick. Now, Waterford could surprise us all too. Like, there's some class hurlers too. Waterford beat Clare on Sunday in a monster final. Yeah. You know, and, and that could throw a whole can of away, but they've the, Claire and Ennis, don't they? Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing. Hard place to go to one at the minute. Yeah, yeah. and then Limerick to come the following week as well, too. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough. Waterford have two of the hardest games to come, like. Mm. Yeah, well, not, not that, but I don't know. We'll just keep trying to get our own house in order up here and trying if maybe if the footballers would give us an old night to play hurling on, we'd be happy, like. I was just um, I was just listening to you last last year, Sambo, on the GA social. It was a remarkable episode with Thomas Niblock, but he was talking after the podcast of going out to the Munster final with you last year. Have you any road trips planned yet to head down? Yeah, well, I'm heading to Bruce Springsteen and Cork. Oh, good stuff. And then I'm going again in, to Dublin on Sunday. And... Uh, I'm going to try and maybe get a match in before the thing that there, but the people of North Antrim would have no problem down the tip of her like, like The wife says to me on Father's Day, do you want to go out for a meal? I says, yeah, I'd love to go out for a meal. She says, where do you want to go? And I says, the horse and jogging. She says, where's yeah. that? I says, outside Thurlis. She says, what do you mean outside Thurlis? says, Limerick's playing tip there. That's where I want to have my Father's Day meal. And we'll go to the match instead. Like we have no problem taking the tip to watch a match or going to Galway either. Like we've, like, we've, like, like I, I, I've said it a million times. Like there, there, there is as much passion about the game sitting in Cousindall as there is in any village, in any county, anywhere in Ireland, and we love it as much as anybody anywhere. Just because we don't have a pocket full of all our medals doesn't. Like because you've all earned medals doesn't mean you love it more. Like you know, it's to me it's the greatest game in the world, and and I was blessed to play at a decent level and 
enjoy it. And, but it's like well, once you sit back and watch Limerick and Cork the other night, then watch the Ulster football. Like you know, like I slag my mates up here and out there. I have a lot of good mates in that. And we slept, they called me the hurling snob and out there something on with turning all the time and out there. You know, football is a great game when it's played right. Like I really enjoyed the league. Derry and Dublin the league was a brilliant game, but a lot of games is, can be hard watching at times. But when hurling's played right, it doesn't even come close to it. It's, it's it shouldn't even be talked in the same sentence. You know, hurling is just it is it is. It is the as was it Liam Griffin said the river dance of sport or whatever. Was it Liam Griffin? I think it was. I think that was Liam Griffin's title. But no, Harlan Harlan is Harlan. Like you can't like no matter Galway or if you're in Calvin, you know, there's people in Calvin love Harlan as much as they do in Kilkenny. And that's strange but true. But then people don't get enough support and that's and people yourself invite me onto these things, and I'll always, I'll always cry for hurting. Like I'll always cry, and not there, but I, I just love it. I love going out to watch on the tens. You know, I love seeing who's going to be the next Neil McManus coming through and Cousin Dollar. You know, it's an amazing way that you're talking to people they can write an under ten off. That boy will be no good. Sure, Dad was no good. <laughs> you know, my father came from Calvin, never seen a hurling match. You know. But people forget that Aaron Graffin's father came from Lauren, wouldn't knew what any stick to play on. Neil McManus's father came from Ant Road in Belfast, never held a hurl in his life. You know. Once you grow up in an area, it becomes part of your soul, like you know. And so my my dream would be, you know, to walk across the road here. Yeah, I live fifty yards from the pitch. I can walk across the road tonight and see Paddy Burke training. To me, Paddy Burke's one of the best defenders in Ireland. I can, he's 50 yards from me. He lives 50 yards from me and the field's 50 yards from me. You know? And that's that's a joy. And I'll keep coaching the kids and keep trying to bring through another Paddy Burke. And trying to give back because I got a lot out of her and I got a hell of a lot. The fact that you phoned me up, like, who am I? Like, I never won an all Ireland medal. You know, you know, you won an all-star or whatever, but it's... It is what it is, but that all Ireland medal gives you that credibility that I would have loved, but didn't get it. Didn't mean it. As as the saying goes, it's better to have loved than lost, and never to have loved at all. Great stuff. Well, Samuel, thanks a million. That was a fantastic chat, and I'm sure all our listeners greatly enjoyed that episode. And thanks a million for coming on to the podcast. No problem. Any time at all.